You know them, you love them. What is your favorite useless magic item? As long as you're playing the bagpipes, you gain the effect of a greater invisibility spell against any creature that can hear the music. Now, I am aware that making it greater invisibility doesn't make this 100% completely useless. You could always reduce it to regular invisibility for starters, but the point is it makes you invisible while requiring you to loudly broadcast your position anyway. It also requires your mouth and both hands to be occupied. That's what she said, so there's not much fighting or spellcasting you can do without dropping the invisibility. For me, I think that's what a useless magical item should be. Clearly not working like a proper one should, but with at least some space for creative thinking. I gave my players a helmet that turns the user's eyes red. I thought it would be something they could have some fun with, maybe use it as an intimidation tactic or while putting on a show to impress some common folk. Well, they sold it immediately. The good news though is that they sold it to a 12 foot tall golem who runs a magic shop. It's now his favorite thing in the world and he never takes it off. Aw, happy ending. I gave my barbarian the helmet of explosive headbutts. It's a single use item, consumable, where if you headbutt someone, it will detonate the explosive charge on top of the helmet, obviously destroying the helmet. I'm trying not to laugh. It deals two third level fireballs worth of damage, 16 D6, half fire and half bludgeoning to the opponent and makes it an attack roll. So, no save for the cheeky rogue with evasion. Also, all ones on the damage rolls are re-rolled because I want the damage to be high. It also has a 10 foot radius so others can be caught up in the explosion if need be. But, the user also takes the same damage in return, meaning it's basically only useful for a totem barbarian or someone else with a way to negate half or all of the damage. The Barbarian saved it for the final conflict with the final big bad evil guy and got the killing blow with an explosive headbutt by jumping off of a 120 foot cliff head first straight into the big bad evil guy's noodle noggin. I also run plunging damage rules, so he got the extra 12d6 falling damage added to the blow. The Barbarian survived the blast on 5 HP and was probably the happiest I've ever seen a player after wrapping up combat. The Coin of Decisionary is quite funny if you ask me. Basically speaking, you ask a question, assign an answer to heads or tails, and flip the coin. It will land on heads or tails to answer your question purely randomly. I think it's supposed to be an item used to give hints from DMs, a way to contact cleric, warlock deities, or it could just be a joke item, of course. Hey, flip for it. The Sheath of Sharpening. It keeps your sword nice and sharp. No actual bonuses, but it does make that cool shwing noise every time you draw your weapon. Uh, I should clarify, by the way, the sword fighting shwing, not the Wayne's World shwing, though the latter wouldn't be as much fun either. Are you kidding me? Hearing Wayne just shout shwing, every time you unsheath the sword? C come on. Stone of Gravity Detection. <laughs> Hold the stone in your hand and release it. If the stone falls, gravity is currently in effect in your location. Ho ho! What if the top of the stone is wet? If you get that reference, hmm. The Pot of Brewing. Dump in some random flora and a liquid and it magically brews a pot of meh tea. Whatever the liquid and whatever the greenery, it's always a bland, safe to drink, slightly oversteeped tea. Started as a joke and ended up as an essential survival item that we've used demon blood and magic components while in a hell dimension. We played a game at a convention and they gave one of the players at my table a magic wand that summons a frog. Nothing else was written on it. He brought it home. It was a nice card stock edged card with a tasteful font theme. His character in our home game ended up with it through some shenanigans over a five year campaign. The shit they put that frog through. 
It always appeared when summoned, no matter how many times it died. A couple of times it committed suicide just to get away from the player. Ring of Rock Talking Use a command word to speak with a rock you're in contact with. Make your rock sound like a stoner. Everyone has a good time. You can also choose when a rock has useful info and when it doesn't. I guess that rock's always ready to roll, man. <laughs> Pipe of Smoke Monsters is a fun one. I had a character spend way too much gold on that just because I, 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 I mean, he thought it was cool. Belt of Pants. <laughs> if you are wearing pants, you appear to be wearing none. <laughs> Jesus. If you are not wearing pants, your legs are covered by an illusory pair of pants. The style and color of which you can choose. I love it. The cock ring. <laughs> God damn it! Summons a rooster for 10 minutes. The rooster isn't friendly or hostile and will follow no commands. If killed, it also disappears. <laughs> I did a carnival in game that was run by Fay and mostly satyrs. The prizes were from a list that I have named the useless and defective magical items. The player's favorite was the emotional support rock. <laughs> Common magical item. It's a rock with googly eyes. Once per round, you may use a free action to activate the rock. Upon activation, it says a positive phrase such as, Good job! Hooray! Aw oh, yeah, you did it! or some similar phrases of the DM's choice. The Rock didn't do anything, but the whole party insisted on playing games until they had all each one an emotional support Rock. They then proceeded to buy chalk at a general store and draw mohawks, tuxedos, and other things on their rocks. I spent the rest of every combat voicing four different rocks with every enemy and villager forever wondering what the hell was wrong with my party. Hey, I'd like to voice an emotional support rock. If anyone's making one out there, let me know. <laughs> Bag of holding variants. I had a DM who was really into them. Over the campaigns with him, we found... Bag of molding. A bag with a mold infestation. <laughs> Items would come out dusted with mold. The bag of colding. Everything came out chilled. There was a 5% chance that metal items would be too cold to handle. It was great for food storage, though. The bag of folding. Foldable objects would come out immaculately folded and pressed. There was a 1% chance of non-foldable objects also coming out. Not so immaculately folded. The bag of golding. There's a 1% chance of pulling out an object and instead pulling out its value in gold. Ooh. The bag of scolding. Some sort of imp lived in the bag and would trash talk you when you pulled anything out. Oh, so you're finally reading that book, are you? Hooked on phonics. Ha ha ha. The bell of delay is delightful to describe. A small handheld brass bell. The player picks it up and shakes it. Nothing happens. No sound. They go on with life. At some random point later in the session, they hear a crystal clear bell tone sound loudly. Bonus points if they were in the middle of stealthing somewhere. Grow your own pet magic bird seed. When planted in soil, this pellet will, over the course of a 10 day, grow into a small bird, sprouting from the ground tail feathers first. The bird is friendly, harmless, and after being removed from the soil, contains very little residual magic afterglow. The mystery bag may contain any of 10 common bird varieties, with a 1% chance of a rare color variant, <gasps> now available at most major toy realtors. Ages five and up, bird feed not included, obviously homebrew, and just a novelty way to acquire one. Completely ordinary sparrow. Staff of Bird Calls. It was used to create goose noises when NPCs were healed from near death, and it led to the creation of a fake cult of Honkina 
Goose Goddess of Healing. Very. It started off as a joke, but now it's becoming real vibes. Rock of Pet Rock Summoning. You can cast Find Familiar to summon Hector the Rock. Unfortunately, he can't come to you. But both of you always know where the other one is. Hector has proficiency in cooking, but he can't cook because he has no limbs. He also likes long walks on the beach, but he needs his owner to carry him around. Hector acts as a therapist to the owner and to the party. A talk with Hector can possibly give 1d6 inspiration. Bag of Ratting Appears to be a bag of holding, but anytime someone reaches into it, all they are able to pull out is a single, very angry rat. All items placed in the bag are turned into rats. We used it to fill a temple with rats after a cleric made the fatal mistake of being slightly rude to us once. <laughs> bag of Holding Chickens It's a standard bag of holding, but the design on the front looks like it has a beak. All normal rules apply, except that you roll a d4 each time you retrieve an item. And on a 4, you instead pull out a chicken. The chicken is non-magical, of course, neither friendly nor hostile, and follows no orders of any kind. Its temperament ranges from docile to confused to terrified, depending on the situation it is suddenly pulled into. It was amusing because it technically provided food, although you could not choose to pull a chicken from the bag. It only happens when you are looking for something else. We were never entirely sure if it was a cursed item or not. A pink leather bag that emits the sound of someone farting when you open it. Any creature within 60 feet who hears it, including the one who opened the bag, must succeed on a DC 12 wisdom saving throw or fall prone in a fit of uncontrollable laughter, becoming incapacitated and unable to stand up for 10 minus the creature's intelligence modifier rounds. Creatures with an intelligence score of 18 or higher aren't affected. An affected creature that takes any damage may repeat the saving throw at the start of its next turn, like an inverse whoopee cushion. Finally, my time to shine. <laughs> my friend and I created a list of mostly useless rings for a homebrew one-shot he was running. What follows are some rings we created based on dumb ideas that we thought of or were inspired by other stuff online, like us. Eternum Loop. The ring can be activated by saying Eternum. It creates a brand new ring and destroys the old one. This one has me all messed up, simply because I actually read this as philosophers, but it says Philosophers, not a typo, Aqueous Ring. You can see the swirl of a deep river inside this ring's gem. When you touch any liquid with this ring, it becomes room temperature. What a weird thing. Lacfilo Ring. The wearer of this ring immediately loses the use of the hand that carries it. To remove the ring, you need to get an orc to lick it. <laughs> ring of Origins. The wearer of this ring speaks in a really high squeaky tone, like a child before puberty. The lower your voice, the bigger the effect. Kunandi Ring. Touch any door and it will open with the fierceness of a dragon, as long as it's unlocked. The Ring of Heroism! The wearer of this ring falls into a deep, death-like sleep. They can only be awoken by a kiss with tongue. Ikor of Flame! A ring trapping the soul of a volcano. It glows red when it touches fire. And lastly, we have the Usage Bitha Ring. When you place it on your finger, you hear whispers questioning every choice you make and become mad for the day. Roll from the long-term madness table. A long rest cures the madness and it resets at dawn if not removed. You know that last one actually sounded like a disappointed Asian dad ring, so that's fun. But you know who's never disappointed in you? Me, Brian Von Vier, checking in on you all the time at the end of the video. I love you all. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and if you want to get some extra content like outtakes or, I don't know, a podcast, a live stream, but mostly early access to videos, make sure to sign up for a membership. You don't have to, but it does help us keep the lights on. We love you all. We'll see you next time. And for me to you, keep making dumb, useless, magical items because they're all fun in the end anyway. Toodaloo.